now we are here and yesterday we discussed it till uh, constructors, right? Yes, uh, Today we will see one more member. See here, uh, we had four members global variables, local variables, constructors, and methods. Today we will discuss about methods. Today we'll discuss about members, methods. See, methods generally, right? If you are writing any class, not only in Apex, wherever you are writing, the entire your business logic should go inside your methods. Entire your business logic should go inside your methods. So we don't do outside of any business logic. We'll do everything inside methods, not on constructors. So. implement the business logic. You can able to see my screen? Yes, yeah. yes Methods bro. is used to implement the business logic. So what are the methods we have? What kind of methods we have? We have two types of methods, are right? Static methods and non-static methods. Static methods and non-static methods. So methods can have what is it contains? Methods always have return type. What is return type? Return types are nothing but string, integer, boolean, and every data type. Whatever we are discussing here, the data types, all the data types will go into a return type, and including void. Let's say I have a method where that method have no return value. I have a method. But the method doesn't have a return value, we'll say void. Void means this method will not return anything for you. Okay. So, for example, what is return type? Let's say whatever discussion we do in our real life, whatever discussion we do in our real life will always result into a, a conclusion, right? What is the final conclusion of, from these discussions? If you're talking to two persons, let's say, hey, what you have done yesterday? Ultimately, the person will reply something, hey, hey, I have done something like this. So, whatever you ask, whatever the, the pro person is thinking through, see, he don't reply instantly, right? he will be thinking what can be shared, what cannot be shared. So, with all the process, will go inside methods and final value that he is replying to you, that is called return from the method, that is called your answer. Whatever process he have done, let him, and then he will give you a final answer, you will be using, oh, oh, yesterday is free or actually he is busy with that worker. So you can come into a conclusion that, oh, he is busy, I got this value because of the written value. The same thing, methods are always gives a written value after processing entire logic. What is the syntax for method? So syntax is very simple, again, access specifier, access specifier and Static. If I say curly square basis and static, that particular keyword is an optional. Okay. And then return type method name curly braces parameter one parameter. And so on. You can have a parameters defined, or you can create a method without a parameter. And then finally, you will be having a condition saying that method body, which is nothing but your business logic goes here. And then at end of the line, you will be having a statement called return. Whatever the return type you have, you need to return the same data type value. You need to return the same data type value. So what is the syntax here? It will go. You have access specifier, nothing but public, private, and global. And you have a keyword, static keyword, which is an optional. And you have a return type, method name, and parameters. And 
you do entire business logic based on the parameters or on the global variables and then do a return whatever you finally processed values okay let me create a simple method which will do a sum of two numbers which will do a sum of two numbers clear now i'll say public i'll say public access specifier is public i'll go with starting and my return is always integer right my return is always integer isn't it i mean if it is a sum of two numbers integer can be a best option i can say for now yard numbers so this is my method so because i wanted to add my number i need to have a two numbers integer integer first number comma integer second number so what is the value that i will get r it u r and return first number plus second number what actually we are doing here we are just summing two numbers and we are returning it right that's all the method is so how to call this method now any idea yesterday we discussed it right all the static methods static numbers can be accessible through its class name all the static members can be accessible which are declared okay static members i mean static global variables or static methods anything can be accessible or invoked through its class name means class name dot method name class name dot method name right now if i go to my developer console i mean execute anonymous window debug open execute anonymous window what is my return type from this method integer result equal to class name dot add numbers class name dot add numbers if i say that 10 comma 20 what is the outcome that i will be getting here if i say 10 plus 20 i will be having a value called 30 so that value will gonna come out two numbers to so that value i'll be getting inside result how i'm getting re inside result because this method is returning a value called integer so only my results is not black whatever method will return that response will be captured under results open log and execute now you can see 30 how it happened it's only because we are returning a value let's say a user might be in a calculator let define and understand one thing think about a calculator if calculator people decided hey uh, you can able to multiply only two numbers i mean you can only add two numbers you can only add 10 numbers is that really looking good for you to add numbers no right the calculator is something like you user i mean the programmer doesn't know how to handle more than one or two inputs definite inputs here we have defined our how many input numbers that i can able to sub addition I have only two numbers that I can add up. But what if it is a calculator? Calculator, there might be one soft person can enter 100. Some person will enter 10. There is no definite number of values to be summed up, right? Got it, my question here? My concern about being a definite parameters and having a multiple data. Let's say the same way, we might also have another condition. I can define another method. I can define my another method public static integer yard number same method name I define you can have a multiple names of same method names but with a different parameter we have a concept called list which is nothing but a collections before going to list I'll discuss what is the benefit of this that you will be getting so that we'll see numbers this is my numbers and uh, because this is a collection of data more than one element what we need to do let's say integer result first return result 
what is fur means if you have more than one value if you if you have collection of values inside one variable then you need to write a for loop what is the data type integer so you need to define integer first and then value value or it can be it can be anything you can define its a variable name and then you just call it and then provide the actual real data containing value all will say result plus equal to value plus equal to value I'll do simple thing. I'll do simple thing. I'll define one of my list here. I'll define one of my list. Integer values equal to new list of integers. Now I need to add a values to this values, right? So I wanted to add from one to I need to add a values from 1 to 1000. I need to add a values in this list saying that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus till 1000 I need to calculate. Till 1000 I need to calculate. For that what I will write. I can also write integer. Integer. Index equal to 0. I will start with 1. Index less than 1001. Index less than until less than 1000 means from 1 to 1000, this loop will be satisfied. It will execute. First, it will say 1, 1 less than 1000, so it will execute. And then index plus plus. Index plus plus in the sense index will become 1 plus 1, 2. Now index is 2, 2 is less than 1001, and then until 1001 it will execute clear dot add index so finally i'll call my method here return and call my method by passing values i don't want to pass multiple now i'm calling if i say only values then what it is calling here it is calling my second method isn't it Now I am trying to execute. Attempt to dereference in all object at what happened? Why we are getting this error? You know why we are getting at line number 54. Why we are getting line number 54 error? Yesterday we discussed one thing. You remember, you forgot. Where is this variable? Declared of global variable default value is null here we just declared a value here we just declared a value we never initialize so we need to initialize that value now what happened there is no due reference error What is the value here it is my god it looks like something interesting number 5000 5000 it's something very easy to answer also if someone to ask 5000 5000 sum of one from one plus till thousand one i can able to calculate here right how i can able to achieve i can able to achieve through collections i can able to achieve through collections See here we have like a collections. What is mean by now? I'm talking about something like collections, right? Now I'm talking about something like collections. What are collections? So collections are very very useful concept and very good concept that you have to be practice. Collections are nothing but holding same type of data, type of multiple values in a single variable. Right? You can see all integers are just folded in one variable, right? Isn't it? Values. How many values? More than 
one value for sure it holding so collections are nothing but which are capable to hold multiple same type of multiple values in a single variable it doesn't value like it will store only integers it will not store like a integer string boolean nothing like that it will store only integers see here and we have different types of collections we have list and we have set and we have map we have list set and map what is the list if i say list first thing you need to remember list allows duplicates list allows list allows duplicates of data duplicates in the sense you can provide the same value repeatedly <coughs> you can provide same value repeatedly list allow duplicates and then it it maintains order of added values it maintains the order of added values list allow duplicates it maintains the order of add, added values let's say if i added like a one value at the first time then the index of the one will always say zero if it is a two then it will maintain two so it doesn't change the order of your values it doesn't change the value order of your values how the syntax will go syntax will go with list and then your data type and then your data type and then list name list name equal to new keyword and then list your data type and then this is how this is how you will declare a list what are the methods most useful methods we have in list first thing we have add method we have add method and we have add all we have a method called add we have a method called add all we have a method okay. these are the most common methods that we use but we also have a get method in list but it doesn't really important that you can able to get the data based on the instead of putting you can provide square brackets and this is the list what about set now what about set if it is a set i'm just changing see set doesn't allow duplicates it will not maintain order and instead of list all you need to mention set set name and the methods are quite common methods are quite common there is no difference in the method for set and list you have i mean these are the most useful methods we have different methods but these are the most useful methods that while writing a code clear we have like a clone we have deep clone and all this stuff but uh, this is more than enough to start with any programming language as a basics and we have thought concept called maps we have thought concept called map map is little tricky here again we have a map map is a key comma value pairs keys doesn't allow duplicates values can be duplicated values can be duplicated but keys cannot be duplicated there is no order concept here because it's a key value no order concept so this is a key value phase so now you can say syntax map comma data type key 
एनर्जी डेटा टाइप कम वैल्यू डेटा टाइप मैप नहीं इक्वल टू न्यू मैप ऑफ की डेटा टाइप कम वैल्यू डेटा टाइप This is how your method. This is how. And what are the most useful methods here? We'll do. Oops. P comma value. These are the most useful methods. Get P P set. If I say key set, it will get all the key set values. If I say values, it will get the all the value data type. If I put, if I want to add a new element, instead of add, I need to say, hey, this is my key and this is my value. So it will update. If I want to get, if you know the key, if you want to get a value, all you need to put get of key. Clear? What are the how many types of collections we had? We have three three different collections. We have list, set, and map. And uh, these are not these are the only methods. No, I'm not saying these are the only two methods we have in list. We have multiple methods in list, but these are the two methods which helps us to start working on collections. So one is list. Yeah. Now you can see here I'm using a method called add, right? I'm using a method called add, isn't it? Hello. I'm using, yes, I'm using a method called add. So if I say I I declared another list. Let's say if I declared another list in this case, k two equal to new list of integer. Now what I'm expecting, I wanted to get all my values in values into k two. Now what I'll do? If it is a one value, I'll use add method. If it is a multiple values, I'll say add all, and then I'll say I'm adding all the values from. Now what happens to this? By end of the time, K2 will have all the values as that one system dot debug. I'm just showing a system dot debug values in K2. Now you can see. I'm just printing a two, but I'm not added any value independently, right? But added all the values in k two. Ultimately, what happens? K two will contain till thousand values. Execute. You can see K to have values, but it is not displaying the final value, isn't it? Now I'll also pr uh, print one more thing called K two dot size. We have another method. I forgot. I'll say K two dot size. What is size means? The number of values within K two. The number of values. How many? If it is a two values, one, two, three, four, two values, then it will say two. If it is three values, then it will say size is three. Now I'll execute it. How many values it contains? Thousand values, isn't it? You can see ten thousand values, not thousand. It's ten thousand. Oh, here ten thousand one I kept, not a thousand. Ten thousand values it contains in K two. How we got it that all values because of add all method. Because of add all method. Clear? Collections are the most useful thing that we'll be using in Apex classes. Collections are the most useful things that we'll be using in the Apex classes. Because you don't work with a single record always. You will be working with the multiple records. That is how you need to write your class. 
which is capable to handle more than one record at one time of process. Clear? Here I'll be adding one more method because we have a method called size. Sorry. I forgot to mention. We have a concept called size. We have in list. We have size. And here also you have. This is wrong, right? Three, I can write. This is how it should go, right? We have six. We have five. These are the methods that we'll be using, and methods are of different types. If it is a static method, then we'll be calling as an, I mean, class name. If it is a non-static method, you need to create an object and call your class. 